You know, a lot, a lot of people, like when we talk now here, tell that the Crimea is more or less lost for, for Ukraine. So what would be the exit strategy to your point that the troops can pull back, the Russian troops can leave? Well, let me first of all say that um, I learned and followed the dramatic events on the Maidan by watching Kromatsky TV um, uh, while on holiday with my family. And it was from your coverage that I learned how dramatic the situation was uh, and um, started making the phone calls that led to the uh, mission of the three ministers. Uh, I think there is an aspect of this crisis in which uh, social media and uh, citizens uh, TV had um, uh, made a huge impact, particularly uh, when um, mainstream media uh, are being um, or were being restricted. And um, as regards um, the um, situation in Crimea, well, we know who controls uh, uh, the um, majority of the troops there. Um, uh, there is a limit to what uh, the international community can do, but you can be uh, sure that um, any uh, taking away of Crimea from uh, Ukraine will not be recognized uh, by the, the democratic world. Um, what can be done? There are a lot of talks about the sanctions um, against some Russian oligarchs or some officials. Um, can you tell more for the Ukrainians to know um, what they can expect? Because they know yeah. that the community, international community is really concerned, engaged but trying to understand what well, the, the sanctions are being uh, agreed as we speak among officials. We will examine them on Monday in the light of uh, uh, events over the weekend. Uh, and I expect some sanctions uh, to kick in um, because uh, 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 Russia is not being cooperative. Um, and we as foreign ministers um, fulfill the decisions of our bosses, the heads of government. So you were the one who was into the negotiation with uh, Viktor Yanukovych at that, at that point, uh, one of few ministers. And really everybody knows and follow this, um, this talks that about the real threat, you know, like the, the video was there. So what was, like, uh, when you're told that there, will, there would be an army, there is a real threat, um, why you told that? What, what was the threat at the, at the moment? Well, I actually saw the people with the sniper guns uh, on the doorsteps of, um, of the Kiev presidential palace. And I understand that those were the people doing the killing uh, um, just a few hundred uh, yards away during different parts of the day. Um, and we also had information from diplomatic sources about, um, about a brigade of uh, interior ministry troops that uh, had already received orders uh, and um, it wasn't certain whether those orders will be uh, obeyed or not. And I think if the Maidan Council had rejected the agreement, it would um, uh, have strengthened President Yanukovych politically because he could have said, well, look, I was ready to shorten my term of office. I was, a, I was willing to be reasonable, uh, but uh, my opponents are unreasonable. Therefore, the only way, um, boys, is to, um, is to get tough. Uh, what was the point of this talk? Were you um, with the idea of the resignation of the president on the table? And well, why it took so long? Well, no politician likes to shorten his term, and um, uh, Viktor Yanukovych resisted that for a long time. Um, he, initially, he just wanted to uh, talk and talk about who is uh, to blame for the events and for the casualties. And remember, we were sitting there uh, as the uh, death toll was mounting. Um, it, the real killing started at, at 8.30 and we were there with President Yanukovych and um, uh, reports were coming in uh, about um, the rising death toll. So it was very tense uh, and 
we had pre-agreed with uh, Minister Steinmeier and Fabius that Steinmeier, representing the biggest country, would interrupt Yanukovych and say, look, we need to get real. Stop, talk, stop uh, uh, blaming people. Uh, uh, there are casualties. We need to talk about how to get out of this and, uh, and how to um, solve this conflict. And, uh, and then we talked about a new government, but a new government wasn't possible without a, a new constitution. And then again, Yanukovych started saying that uh, you know, that requires many months of negotiation and so on. And, and then I put to him that, look, we need some kind of um, uh, guillotine uh, of, um, by when we will have a new presidential election. And he was trying to argue that the, the new constitution will decide that. And I said, look, Mr. President, we can't sell this to the opposition. Uh, you have to announce by when you agree to go. And uh, there is a way of doing it. Um, you can declare by when you will resign your office. And it was literally at that moment when I said it that someone brought in a piece of paper saying that President Putin was on the line. And after, it was a long conversation, I would say half an hour, he came back and, uh, and he agreed. And we don't know, of course, what transpired in that, in that conversation. Um, what was the, um, I mean, but at, at the point, like, it's mine, I guess, there is today the video that Mr. Yanukovych was collecting his stuff already on the 19th. Like, what do you do? explain this persistence and was there other way of negotiation at that moment or was there any sign that well, he would uh, leave the next he day? He told us that he was going to leave Kiev. He said, I, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be in Kharkiv because uh, I have a meeting. Uh, and I think the idea of the meeting was to... Kharkiv or Donetsk, sorry, I can't remember. But the idea was to show that he has uh, support back in his uh, home base. Um, uh, and I think he just completely misjudged uh, the psychological effect of him leaving the capital at such a moment. Well, what do you can see can be NATO involvement in, as a, I asked Poland being a NATO country and NATO member? I wouldn't count on uh, NATO's involvement. Ukraine is not a member, it's a partner. Uh, but, um, uh, I mean, we are, of course, as a member, concerned about the security situation in a neighboring country. But um, I think you should work on the assumption that um, uh, Europe will not want to see it as a, uh, as a defense issue. Uh, is there any threat to Poland and to the other countries? You've been calling for... No, not at the moment. There's, the, there's a threat to instability in our region. But, um, you know, we don't feel directly threatened. No, Poland take a very... Like, okay, then I will ask you another question. So we know the Polish role in that and really appreciate it. So how Poland can influence the other countries being just one country and how the West also should... I should ask that, really. Um, how do you think that can be protected the Crimean Tatars and the population who is not in the line of support of uh, referendum in Crimea now? Because there is a real threat to them now. Well, the free world is coordinating very closely on this. I was just on a, a, a conference call with uh, the United States, the European Union, uh, Turkey, Canada, UK, Germany and France and um, uh, and actually the Secretary General of the United Nations as well and the Secretary General of OSC so you know all the relevant uh, all the relevant uh, people except sadly for Russia and Ukraine because that would be the key thing um, uh, and it's very important for the West to stay united and to coordinate its positions um, to try to persuade Russia to, to start talking to, to, to a, a Ukrainian government headed by a, a reasonable, competent, 
prime minister who we assumed in those negotiations uh, at the presidential palace in the presence of the Russian representative that would be that it would be Arseniy Yatsenyuk who, who will be prime minister. So we're very surprised that Russia now denounces this government as, as extreme. Um, and, uh, and the best way uh, is to help Ukraine uh, regain macroeconomic stability and re-stabilize re, um, its state structures. And, um, uh, and there will be efforts by, by Poland and Germany, uh, by various international uh, bodies. Um, uh, we, are, we stand ready to help. But the uh, main effort, obviously, has to be Ukrainian. You know, um, it's successive Ukrainian leaders who have um, who have neglected your military. It's successive Ukrainian leaders who uh, uh, did not have the courage to reform the gas sector and uh, and, and reduce the subsidies. It's successive um, Ukrainian leaders who tolerated corruption on 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 such a scale and so on. Um, I'm afraid the West cannot save you from yourself. The first responsibility for saving and reforming your country is on your own leaders. You now have um, uh, some new leaders uh, who I think know what needs to be done. Um, they should be supported and you should stay vigilant that uh, that this time uh, you're not um, disappointed or uh, or let down by in the way that the Orange Revolution was let down. And the Budapest Treaty, how it's come to the place, the Budapest Treaty. I well, it's one of the arguments that we that we have in uh, e uh, in talking to not just the United States and um, and UK uh, and Russia, of course. But also other countries um, associated themselves with that treaty, namely France. And I can tell you that uh, my prime minister just this morning talked to the prime minister of China, uh, which is also following uh, events with in, in Ukraine with great uh, concern. But look, I just want to end by by saying that um, in Poland we we feel keen solidarity with the Ukrainian people. We wish you success. We. Um, we follow with great worry the uh, the, the events uh, and the, um, the the threats that surround Ukraine. Uh, we wish you all the best. Poland will do its utmost, um, and I hope uh, you will uh, restabilize your country and you will uh, join our family of um, free, democratic, and successful nations. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, and yeah, I would thank for your support. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you for your patience.